What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Enigmatica 2 Expert. Oh, yeah, guys. So we're here during the middle of the day, and it looks like it's starting to get a little dark outside, surprisingly. Uh, if we look up, we can see that there appears to be a solar eclipse happening. Oh, yeah. That's a thing, I believe, from Astral Sorcery. I'm not actually sure what happens when the solar eclipse happens. Does it allow mobs to spawn. I mean, things are obviously darker. You can see the torch light around and everything looks a little dim. Hmm. Does any special mobs come out when this happens or is it just allow <laughs> monsters to spawn during the middle of the day? I wonder. I don't know if I've actually been around one of these solar eclipses in like an overworld setting. Like I've definitely been, or I've seen these before in a uh, sky block. So it looks like monsters definitely can spawn, so it affects the actual light. It's not just a visual effect. That is kind of interesting, though. Yeah, solar eclipse during the day. Aha. Uh -huh. So midday, monsters are spawning. Um, I've been spending some time around the base, guys. You can see that there has been work done. Uh, you can also see my levels are at 111. Yes, I have spent so much time in the nether collecting quartz to make all of this stuff happen. Oh my goodness, guys. So we have a good portion of the base done. That back wall is completely filled in. Uh, right now, if we take a look at this guy, we can see that we have 418 more blocks of quartz. So we might be able to fill in maybe part of this wall. I don't think it'd be the entire wall. We would probably do that wall over here. And still, this isn't even completed on this side. Uh, yeah, I wanted to have this kind of lined up all the way over with this one. Yep, and then you can see here we got kind of like a lake going on. So I'm not sure how I'm going to deal with this. <laughs> we'll have to fill that in somehow. Uh, and then, you know, maybe even later on, this base might even just wrap all the way around the lake. That might not be the, the final end. Maybe we'll just have like another section over here or something. That's something that we'll have to figure out later on as... The need arises for more space uh so it looks like it has become brighter outside oh yeah the uh does that change the let's see where is the light level looking at local difficulty light it says 15 sky 11 block okay i should have taken a look at that during the solar eclipse and seen if the light level outside was actually like down to six or something it probably was or maybe down to one i'm not sure uh but anyway so in order to progress through the mod pack, we had unlocked industrial industrial craft last episode. Um, so our first quest says, uh, this is a tier one tech mod. It offers a lot such as ore doubling, power generation item, duplication tools and armor. You need to craft an advanced machine case in order to progress into a d industrial foregoing. If you cannot be bothered making IC2 generators, you can convert RF into EU with mechanism. So that is pretty cool. Uh, so this is a check box task this is just saying okay i've read it uh let's choose a loot chest i'll claim that one quest complete ic2 better questing hypnotize begun the industrial craft quest line awesome so what kind of a reward are we going to get pecking duck is it pecking or peking i'm not actually sure um well i mean that's pretty good but we have way better food so <laughs> i guess if we didn't have anything we could be looking at that for now, we'll just put that into our chest over here. Okay, so moving on, we have this done. That's just kind of like an intro, just saying, okay, you've unlocked it. Here's a free loot chest. Rubber is probably the first thing that we're going to want to get in this mod. Uh, so sticky resin is extracted from rubber trees with a tree tap. Sticky resin can be smelted to make rubber, but it's far more efficient to process in an extractor. Mm-hmm. So you get three rubber per sticky resin with an extractor, if I remember correctly. Otherwise, you just smelt it one-to-one -to, -one to start off with, and I think that's what we have to do. So really, the first thing that we are going to need to do is to find some IC2 rubber trees, and we need a tree tap as well. So let's do the tree tap. I'm just going to assume the recipe is the default one. Probably shouldn't assume in this mod pack, but it looks like that is, in fact, correct. So that is the tree taps. Not going to make too many of those. There's also an electric version of the tree tap that we could probably make a little bit later. Let's put that away. Yeah, there is an electric version of the tree tap that we can make a little bit later that uh, 
well, you can just recharge, essentially. Um, so we need to find IC2 rubber trees. This is all of that is not the IC2. Now, actually, if I remember correctly, IC2 rubber mm. should be found in swamps more, uh, more heavily, right? So there's a swamp biome over this way. Oh, there's some right here. IC2 rubber trees, these guys. You can tell that they're the IC2 rubber trees because you got like the single block. Normally they go up like three blocks. But yeah, you can tell that they got the little thing sticking up on them. Okay, so this is what you're looking for is these trees right here. And they got the little dots on them. Uh, the dots will regenerate the, uh, the resin over time. If you right click on them after you've already right clicked on them, you can potentially get more stuff and you see that dot just went away. So you don't want to over right click on them. Otherwise you lose the ability for that tree to produce more resin on that spot. Uh, so there's some here, some here. In fact, I'm just gonna get rid of all these leaves. I <laughs> got a lot of leaves there. So we got rubber tree saplings, which is awesome. We can bring those and grow those closer to the base and make our lives a little bit easier. I'm not seeing any more rubber on this. Now the trees don't have to have leaves on them in order to reproduce on these little spots here. Uh, all you gotta do is just make sure that block is intact and you did not destroy the little spot. Yep, and then you should be able to get yourself more rubber over time. Uh, all right, so we ended up with 13 sticky resin. Oh, wow, rude, rude. This thing, I'm. you know what, I'm gonna kill this thing. I'm gonna try. Can I? I can't even get close to it. Can I get it to come closer to me? Let's see. Aha! Aha! Suck it! Okay. <laughs> Got it. It dropped copper ingots. That's weird. Bird feathers, iron nuggets. Huh. Okay. Well, that's the first time we were able to kill one of those things. First time I even tried, I guess I should say. Ooh, actually, I want this on my bar. Yeah, we need to get back over to our base area. Well, I guess we have a sleeping bag. We just need to get somewhere where there's mobs not at. Then we can just sleep real quick through the night. Let's do that. Uh, oop, there's a zombie. And a frozen skeleton. Okay. Hey, our uh, cactus broadsword dinged. Okay, so... We have slept through the night. Monsters are no longer a problem. We have some of these rubber tree saplings let's plant these somewhere nearby the base i assume we're gonna need quite a few of these uh so i will plant some right around here for now and then maybe later we'll uh, find a better spot for them uh you can bone meal those trees if i remember correctly what are you wearing some crazy looking armor did you drop something okay faraday chest play from immersive engineering These zombies are just won't leave me alone. Armor 19. You didn't drop any armor. Okay, so that's two. This is six. So this armor is pretty garbo compared to what we're currently wearing. Uh, yeah, let's grab some bone meal real quick and see if we can get those trees to grow. Uh, I got some bone meal here. All right. Easy. And I'm just going to break the leaves like I do. We don't need the leaves on there. Do this one, break those leaves. Are we gonna get any more saplings? We got one more. Look at that skeleton. Okay, and we got a few out of that one. We got up to four, that's pretty good. Uh, let's eat something. I'm gonna go kill that skeleton up there. Maybe it'll drop some good armor. Let's see what we got here. Whoop. He's gonna knock me off I'm not careful. Whoa, this skeleton moves like really fast. I didn't drop anything worthwhile. <laughs> Just a bow and a skull. Okay. Well, we took care of that problem. He won't ambush us now. <laughs> so that's a plus. Let's get this stuff out of my inventory. Uh, that's about it. And then we got some materials here. Get that out of here. Bones and bone meal. Cool. So yeah, we have four more rubber tree saplings. Uh... For now, I don't think we're going to plant any more. We'll probably find a better spot for these things. But yeah, we have this stuff available nearby the base now, which is pretty good. Okay. Uh, I think I've done in the past is you can use something like a cardboard box. Do we have one of those? I don't know if this works. I haven't tried it in this pack yet, but a cardboard box or some other way to move blocks. 
You can take those, pick them up, set them down somewhere. Well, I'm not sure if I wanted it set down like that. What if I do it like this? Nope, it's still on its side. Does that ruin? <laughs> Why is that facing upwards now? I don't know. Do we still have the spot on here? Did that ruin it? Okay, so it looks like that does ruin the spot. Cardboard box does not work on these things. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, in the past, I've used things like... Um, Oh, what are they called? The portal gun or some other way to move blocks. And you could like make a a big old ring with these spots. Yeah, and then just be able to harvest this stuff much easier. Apparently you can't do that anymore. Or at least not with the cardboard box. There might be some other method for us to do that in the future. Or we might just set up some kind of a normal farm that automatically harvests these things. Okay. So we got quite a bit of this, 26 sticky resin. Let's go ahead and start smelting that down because we are going to need the black rubber ball things. Uh, some more seared brick. We'll put these in here. And then we also need to get ourselves some more coal. That should be way more than enough. Stack those all up. Why was that not stacking? That's weird. Okay, so we need eight coal turned into the tiny coal. They're so tiny. Okay, and there we go. So that should smelt everything down. We won't have to worry about that. Very, very good. So now that we have these and we have the tree taps, what was the other thing that we needed? I guess that's it. So if we go back to our industrial craft quest, rubber, tree tap, and sticky resin. Okay, yep, that's all we needed. Awesome. We'll do the top loot chest. We'll claim that and pop in. We get some greenhouse glass. So greenhouse glass is pretty good. You place that above your crops and that increases... The tick rate of them and how fast they grow so it is another way for you to speed up your crops um not sure we need that at the moment if we set up some kind of like an automated farm in the future we'll definitely take a look at that but for now yep we'll just move on so beyond the rubber it wants us to make a generator and then that's going to lead us to a macerator uh and then the extractor okay so we need to do the macerator well, i guess we have to do the generator first then we can do the macerator so generator and Industrial generator. This thing. Let's see. Which one? So we can do basic machine casing plus the RE battery in the furnace. I don't remember. Did we already make? Okay, we have a basic machine casing, so that's what we want to do. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this one. So we want the RE battery. So that requires 10 item casing. So if we had a metal former, we can run it through the machine, but we need power for that. So we're going to be stuck using some kind of a hammer on the plate in order to turn it to the tin item casing. Now, to start off with, we could just do two tin to make a plate. But as we did last episode, we made ourselves a plate cast, right? So we can just use our plate cast in the smeltery and not waste any of our valuable resources. So now we just need to get ourselves a tin ingot and turn it into a plate, which happens quite quickly. The tin has a low melting point. Okay, so that's done. We'll pour it onto our tin cast here. And there's our tin plate. So that mixed with the the hammer from, an, uh, where is it? Immersive engineering, but where is the hammer? Oh boy. I want some way to search for my items. I feel like I'm blind. I'm looking right over it, probably because I am. Uh, so there's our tin item casing. Did we need more than one of those? Let's go back in here. Yeah, we need to do that twice. Okay, so we needed two tin ingots, turn into the plates, turn into the tin item casings. Not a big deal. All this happens quite quickly, so we can just do another one just like so. All right, very good. So going back to the generator and the RE battery, now we need an insulated tin cable. So we need to figure out how to do that. So we need another tin plate plus cutters. So that's three iron plates plus two iron. So there's our iron plates, two iron. And then we need to do that on a crafting table here. Okay, so there's the cutter. Now we need another <laughs> tin plate. <laughs> yep, all sorts of plate making. Eventually we'll have that metal former and this will be like super, super easy. Until then we can just do it a few times like this. Not a huge issue. Uh, so there's the tin and the snips. There's the tin cable. So then we have to take the cable plus the rubber. We'll just do one, okay. 
And there's our insulated tin cable. I think we needed two redstone. And then we should be able to make this RE battery. My goodness, guys. <laughs> the micro crafting in IC2 is real. All right, so we need a furnace. I don't think we had another one, uh, but we should have plenty of cobblestone. So there's four cobblestone. Uh, I don't remember the recipe. Two stone gears, so that's stone and wood planks. Okay, so that's easy enough, plus coal and some more cobblestone. So we need a lot of cobblestone. We need some wood. We need is it coal. Okay, so let's search for furnace. And it's right here. No, so that's the cinder furnace. That one got me. Okay, so we'll make two stone gears. Why can't I do that? Is That's cobblestone. Oh, I don't have cobblestone. We had the compressed cobblestone right. Try that one more time. So there is two stone gears. And we're missing one more cobblestone. We'll fix that real quick. There it is furnace so can we make our generator now is it this one this one there it is Whew. that took a little bit of time there uh yeah again like as we progress to the mod we're gonna be unlocking machines which will make all this crafting so much easier and yeah it'll speed things up significantly so going back to industrial craft we'll claim our middle loot chest we'll just keep doing like a round robin on this ultimate furnace Yes, ultimate furnace is absolutely amazing. Okay, guys, ultimate furnace hype. So the ultimate furnace, uh, for those of you who watch my stone block series know all about this thing. <laughs> uh, we'll just stick it right here for now. I assume I can mine it, yeah? Uh, uh. Okay. <laughs> so the ultimate furnace, if you put like a tiny piece of coal in there, uh-oh. Okay, I thought the game crashed. Like one tiny piece of coal, I believe smells like two stacks of items. It's absolutely insane what this thing will do. Let's smelt down some cobblestone here. Let's just take a look. And it smelts it like super, super, super fast too, which is absolutely fantastic. We'll be using this thing all the way to end game, I'm sure. So yeah, look how fast that thing's smelting. <laughs> or is it like four stacks of items? I can't remember, it's so many items off one tiny piece of charcoal. So we ended up getting just over three stacks of items off a tiny coal. That is absolutely amazing. So no more of this fast furnace nonsense. I'll probably move the uh, ultimate furnace over here for now until we figure out where this is gonna go. Yeah, so that's gonna save us on so much resource and so much time. That is absolutely amazing. All right, guys, so the next item on our list here is for us to get to the macerator. So the macerator is the same thing as like an industri or a thermal expansion pulverizer or a sag mill from Ender IO. It does the same kind of thing. Uh, so the macerator, if I remember correctly, should be fairly inexpensive. Let's take a look at that. So it is, okay, so we have to do an electronic circuit. So that means we have to have six copper wires Insulated so we need six of these copper cables uh, So we need three copper plates and then we need six rubber balls. Okay, so copper will do three of those We'll get six of the rubber Like so I think copper melts a little bit slower. So we'll probably have to skip this part um, Oh wait, no macerator. What else can we do flint? We have basic machine casing. We already have Okay, and then flint, I think I had over here. Was it three flint? Where is my flint? I know I have it around here somewhere. It's right there. So three flint, two cobblestone, and then we need the circuit. Two cobblestone, right? Okay, and then again, the circuit was the insulated copper wires, two redstone, and an iron plate. So we already have the iron plate and the two redstone. That's not a big deal. We just need to cast out the copper plates, turn those into the wires, mix them with the rubber, and then we can proceed. And there's our electronic circuit. We'll be making a lot of these in the future. And I did see that you can also use the basic control circuit for mechanism, which is a much simpler recipe once we get into mechanism. I'm not sure when we unlock that. But anyway, 
Uh, so the macerator should just be able to be created like so. Awesome. Okay, so now we have another quest complete. Very, very good. Yeah, we'll be using the macerator a lot as well in the future, I am sure. Let's go back to the top loot chest here. Let's pop this one. And what do we get? Southern style breakfast. Top tier food, always edible buffs players. Nice. So that, what is the recipe for this? I wonder. That is toast plus an egg. The uh, tofu bacon that we're already doing. Biscuits and gravy. So that's something different. Grits. Okay, so grits are made from salt. Cornmeal, fresh water. What is corn? Okay, so we'd have to grow corn. I'm just kind of curious what it takes for this. Biscuits and gravy requires Brit. Oh, obviously a biscuit and gravy. Biscuit is dough and butter, so that's pretty simple. We're doing this anyway for our current food. And then the gravy is stock, which is just bone, I believe, in a pot. Yeah, and you get three of them. Looks like you can do eggplant. Well, that would make it real simple. Or we can do a steak. Okay, a couple different ways to do that. Um, so how much different is that than what we're currently doing? This one does say, or I guess it doesn't say that it's a top tier food, but it does 22 saturation. This one does 24 saturation. I th does it do more hunger haunches? I'm not entirely sure. Huh. Uh, all right, let's eat one of these and see what it says. Okay, it doesn't say it gains on the nutrients either. Interesting. I'm not sure why you'd want this one over this one. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's put the food away. It looks like that is a very, very good food, but I kind of want to keep our nutrition up. So, yeah. Let's move on. So... Beyond that, the extractor. So that's pretty much all we have to do. So let's take a look at the extractor. That guy is made with some tree taps, a basic machine casing, and yet another electronic circuit. So we saw how to make all this stuff. Let me just go ahead and craft it up and we'll be right back. All right, and there's our extractor completely crafted and the quest is now complete. So again, we'll get ourselves something for our trouble here. Let's do the middle loot chest. We'll claim that one, and hopefully we get something really awesome. Toasted Western. Okay, so a dairy grain protein vegetable at a 4.2%, and ours gives us fruit as well at 54 So again, another food, but this food isn't nearly as good as what we're currently using, although it does look like you can use it with uh, Thongcraft. Well, I, I'm not sure what we're going to end up doing with it. Uh, so now that we have the extractor, that's going to allow us to do the compressor, uh, a blast furnace, geothermal generator. That's probably a good way of making power. I'm kind of curious which path here. Semi-fluid, that's another way of making some decent power. Kinetic generator, electric furnace, metal former. So we really want to go down this path here and get to this metal former so we can make plates and other such things a lot easier. We can make wires as well out of an ingot without having to put it through our smeltery, make a plate, then cut it with our cutters here. Yeah, that's definitely where I'd like to go in IC2. Um, so let's take a look at compressor. I think a lot of these recipes are about the same. There's nothing like super unique about them. So I think I'll just go ahead and go through and try and make as many of these things as I can to get down to that metal former. Um, then there's the electric furnace, which should be about the same. Let's take a look at that one. Electric furnace is an iron furnace. So that's a regular furnace with some iron plates. That's fine. And then the metal former is the final one we want to look at. So this one's a little bit more expensive. It does require toolboxes and bronze, okay? So bronze is a thing, then copper wires around iron for the coils. Everything else is pretty much standard stuff. Let me go ahead and start making up some more of these things and we'll be right back, guys. All right, guys, so a lot of the crafting has been done here. We got a lot of quests complete. <laughs> so we have the compressor. We'll do, how about bottom loot chest? We'll do top loot chest, and then we'll do middle loot chest. So the compressor, the electric furnace, and then the metal former. The metal former, I think, is the most important part 
of all of those. Hey, Singularity. That's not bad. Uh, we got ourselves a sleeping mat. Well, that's not necessarily something that we need. And finally, some infusion crystals. Okay. So those only have 25 uses left. Uh, mystical crystal? Why only 25 uses? Huh. That's kind of weird. What's the recipe to make one of those? Is there not? Oh, you have to do Ender Amethyst and the Energetic Infuser. That's kind of a interesting setup here. Yeah, there's a lot of weird things in this mod pack that we're going to be experiencing as we progress through it. Okay, so this is quite full. I have like this different bait and stuff that we can get rid of and some other various things. But yeah, we are going to have to look at uh, better storage here in the future. Anyway, so we have all of these different machines made. I did have to make another recipe of the basic machine casings. We can put those away now. Uh, but the most important thing is this metal former, and then we have the generator. Now, I believe we can put the generator right next to the metal former, and it'll provide it with power. Uh, another thing we are going to want to make is something called an electric wrench. I don't remember... Yeah, I don't remember if you need the electric wrench anymore. It was a point in time where if you use the regular wrench, the, oh, what's going on? Industrial craft, uh, just search for industrial wrench. If you use this wrench to move one of the IC2 machines, you had like a 75% chance of breaking it. So you had to use the electric wrench for a 100% chance. What does this say? You can safely break IC2 machines with a pickaxe. Oh, okay. So back in the day when IC2 first came out or when I first started using it in earlier uh, modded Minecraft, you had to use a wrench to pick up the IC2 machine with a 75% chance of breaking it and you just get the machine frame back. You had to use the electric wrench in order to get it back 100% of the time. And if you used a pickaxe on it, you would get back just a machine frame, I think. Yeah, so it says that we can safely break IC2 machines with a pickaxe. So that sounds pretty awesome. Let's try it on with something that's like not that expensive, like the Macerator. So if I do that and I break it with a pickaxe, look at that. Okay, so I was thinking that we were going to have to do some crazy stuff here. Nope, we are good. Macerator, all right. So we want the metal former plus the generator. Let's stick these somewhere. I guess we'll put them somewhere close for right now. We'll have to figure out where we're going to put these permanently later on. Uh, so the generator, this produces EU. The metal former needs EU to do stuff. And that can make uh, wires. It can make plates. Both of these things are going to be a lot better, I think, than uh, going through the smeltery method. Let's give this thing something to make power from which i believe is coal i don't know if you can use the tiny coal i guess we can try that as well does tiny coal work in this thing seems to work works rather quickly and we don't get a lot of power okay 750 eu out of a total uh we're probably gonna want to put regular well i guess we can throw those in there that's fine we'll just chew through those yeah, so that's filling up the power. Another alternate method of generating power in IC2 is you can put redstone in this slot down here, and redstone turns into the EU power, at least the last time I checked. So the first thing that I want to do with this is I want to make a bat box. The bat box uh, stores up EU power. Yeah, it can receive power from any side, I believe. I believe it's any side. And the side of the dot is where it outputs power. So it's a, it's a battery, it's essentially. We can hold 4K EU in this. This thing holds 40,000 EU, 40K, so 10 times as much. So we'd be able to generate a whole lot of power and just have it available when we need it. So that's something that I want, but that requires us to have three of these RE batteries. Uh, so that's a lot of 10 item casings. Um, so that's gonna be two ingots. So we need a total of six ingots for all of these. So let's get 610. Oh, I guess we don't have that. We'll take our 10. You know what? We have the macerator now, too, where we can double our ore. I guess we'll get some use out of this. So let's put the 10 in there. That's going to chew through it very, very slowly, but it should give us two per ore, which is going to be a lot better. Uh, we do have those overclocker upgrades that we can put in there to speed up this process. 
but every overclocker upgrade does make it use a lot more power as well. Uh, let's grab these things and let's see what we can do here. So if I put one of those in there, doesn't really go much faster. Two of those in there, that's going decent faster. Three of them, that seems like a more reasonable speed, I would say. How are we doing on power? Okay, so we are not using too much power. What about four? It looks like it's still able to keep up on power, so that's fine. All right, so there is 12 crushed tin ore. So I think we can throw those into here and smelt them down just the same. Okay, very good. So we can pour that out as a block, and then I'll take the rest of those and pour those out as ingots. We can also get the electric furnace hooked up, but I think before we do that, um, yeah, I think before we get the electric furnace hooked up, we'll start running power wires around and stuff. And before we do that, I'm going to want to get the battery box. So we will switch completely over to IC2 here in a little bit. But until then, we're just going to do it this way. So here is our 12 ingots, and we need to turn those into... Um, yeah, we have to do this method, I think, the rolling. So let's place one here. And again, we'll put those in there. Okay, so that gives us the plates. Okay, so that is drawing a lot of power, actually. This machine uses way more power than the other one. So two overclocker upgrades in there. Still goes at a decent speed. Oh, yeah, we're not keeping up here. Yeah, we can't uh, go at that speed. Maybe one overclocker upgrade. How are we doing? We're still losing power. This is where getting the, the bad box or the battery storage makes a lot of sense. Because when we start using these machines, it'll draw a lot of power, and we'll have that already stored up. Okay, let's wait for the rest of this to finish up, and then we will look at making this bat box. This extractor definitely makes turning the resin into rubber so much better. You get so much more for it. So it's definitely one of those machines you want to make. Okay, so we should have pretty much everything good to go here at this point to make our bat box. There it is. Very good. So that's another quest complete for us eventually when the quest book decides that... Oh, you know what? We also needed something else, didn't we? We needed six insulated tin copper cables. Tin copper cables. We needed six insulated tin cables. <laughs> uh, so I did end up making too many plates out of that tin. Uh, we can actually, can you put that through the metal former? No, it doesn't go in there. So we could melt those back down and turn those into ingots and then run it through. Is there any other way we can do that? I don't think we can. Let's take one of those. We'll melt that down. We'll just turn it into an ingot. Okay. So there's that. And this one. Then we can put it through on this machine, turn those into wires. Let me grab some of these overclockers out of this one. We'll throw it in this one, and we'll make that go a little bit faster. Okay, so we are needing coal. I'll just throw in the regular coal in there. <laughs> All right, so there is four. Man, how many more of those things? We needed one more. Okay, so we can... We had a total of six of these. We will do a little bit more than that. Let me grab this stuff. So there's that. There's those... Okay, so we have plenty. I think we didn't even need to turn those into the insulated ones, but we're turning into the insulated ones anyway. Um, yeah, it said that we had that complete before I even turned those into the insulated version. Uh, let's do the bottom loot chest. We'll claim that and pop it. We get ourselves chili dogs. Okay, lots of food items is what we're getting out of this mod pack, uh, the quest rewards, which is kind of interesting. Anyway, so we have yet another quest complete. Uh, the bat box that's going to allow us to get to an electric jetpack, get into some higher tier things, and all of these different items here. I think for now, we're going to hold off on doing anything further. Uh, I will rearrange those machines so the generator will power up our bat box, and the bat box will provide power to all of our machines. So we have a large amount of EU power storage, or at least a lot compared to what we have right now. Guys, we're going to wrap the episode up here for today. Lots of IC2 stuff. Uh, I have spent a whole bunch of time off camera here in the nether trying to get all the quartz for this base. I still need more. My goodness. I spent hours there collecting all this stuff. Maybe I shouldn't have chose quartz as our building block. I don't know. Hopefully, we'll be able to get this stuff in a faster method going forward. 
But anyway, guys, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.